Hi, David Easterbrook here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're not talking about trees. We're going to be talking about rocks. I'm really excited to show you a whole new faucet of bonsai. In fact, it's not bonsai. It's called sui seiki. Sui, it's a Japanese term. Sui means water, seiki means stones. So stones that were mainly shaped uh, by the movement of water and uh, they're found in the bottoms of fast moving rivers and streams um, in Japan and everywhere else in the world. Also, sometimes they can come from mountains. So let me tell you a little bit about the history of Suiseki. It was started in China a couple of centuries ago. It was the Chinese that finally uh, introduced it to the Japanese during the Kamakura period. That's like in the 12th century. And eventually by the time the Edo period ran around, came around, which was like in the, sixth, the 17th, to the 19th century. Well, then uh, the Japanese were crazy about these um, beautiful stones that represent natural landscapes. And um, since then it's expanded, this appreciation for these natural landscape stones has expanded throughout the world. And now you have Suiseki clubs and societies in every major a city on every major continent in the world. So let me show you a few of these amazing suiseki. Um, these are from my collection. Um, many of them were bought from Japan. So this one here, for example, this is a beautiful um, Sajigawa Ishi. Um, Sajigawa is the river and Ishi means stone. So it was found in that river and it represents a coastal rock. You know, you can just imagine the waves crashing against it and all the pools of water and tidal pools that are gathering around it. Um, a beautiful coastal rock. Uh, here we have a Segaku Ishi. It comes from um, a stone that comes from the river Segaku. And this represents an immense landscape um, with smaller mountains in the foreground and in the background we have these immense mountains and we have in the foreground all these the wrinkles of old paths and we have streams and you can just imagine yourself standing in front of this immense landscape unfolding before your eyes this scenery of this nature going on for miles and miles it's actually it's such an inspiring um, Suiseki, this one. I, um, I truly love this one. Okay, here we have a very interesting bridge stone. Um, this one comes from Mount Abraham um, in, in Maine, found on the side of a mountain. And here I get the feeling of this new world or this new island rising from the primordial miasma of underneath an ocean or a vault, you know, rising up uh, from a volcano above the waters and you can see all the swirling waters running off these new mountain chains. So it, it really represents like a, a new planet or a new world rising into existence. I, I, I find this one quite inspiring. Here we have a little Furuyama, Furuya, a little stone that comes from the mountains in Japan. And here we really do get the impression of these high mountain tops that are rising upright with these little mesas, mesas coming from them. And we have little rivers running down from the mountains. Here we have a little waterfall. So you really get um, the feeling of immense nature, but in such a concentrated form in this little stone. Um, actually, this was um, brought to North America by a Japanese family several generations ago. 
And finally, it was sold in California um, to a stone collector. Here we have a beautiful Tamba Ishi. It, um, it's a tam it, this one comes from the Tamba River, and this represents an immense landscape, uh, a prairie or fields, or it could even be um, ripples in the land. Um, and over here in the background, we have these immense mountains rising from these prairies. So you really do get that feeling of, of being um, like at the base of the Rocky Mountains and in, in, a, in a farmer's field and looking over all those, those flat fields and all of a sudden you have a, a mountain rising abruptly from that straight horizontal space. Uh, these rocks were meant to be contemplated, to be meditated upon, often by um, monks in Japan uh, that, uh, from the Zen sect, and they used these to um, discover um, the beauty of nature, the immensity of nature. Um, they're very spiritual. These, these stones are considered to have souls, and they say that the more you look at them, the more you contemplate them, um, the more you will discover in these stones. They reveal their inner workings, their soul, bit by bit by bit. The, you can look at this, any stone, any suiseki, for years on end and never be bored because there's always something new to discover in these amazing stones. Thank you very much. Okay, folks. Actually, this was just a short presentation. I just finished a two-hour presentation on the art of Suiseki. Um, and these are only a few examples of um, Suiseki that I presented this evening. But I would be curious to know which one, which one of these Suiseki provoked your interest? Which one did you really like? Get back to me. I'd like to find out.